Thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, very interesting conference. So in this talk, uh, I'm going uh, to speak about the problem of uh, ensemble controllability that um, all of you know. So we have a, a set of Schrodinger uh, equations. So we have an Hamiltonian that depends on a parameter alpha. And uh, uh, so this parameter uh, represents the fact that uh, we have uh, some, something that is not known in our system. So some, something, uh, for instance, the, <coughs> the difference between the energy level not known precisely, or could uh, uh, represent the fact that we are uh, treating, uh, trying to control at the same time uh, many systems. And uh, we would like to induce a transition from one level to another one by using uh, the same control. So, Actually, the problem is uh, we control an ensemble of, uh, of, of quantum mechanical system, but the control that we are using, it is only one, let's say a, a, a finite number of, uh, uh, of control. So the problem is uh, given two states in the Hilbert uh, sphere. Here, I'm just considering the finite uh, dimensional case. We would like to know if it, is, if it is possible to find a time and a series of control that are independent of the parameter that are steering the system from the initial to the, uh, to the final state. So this problem is uh, actually complicated because we are controlling an infinite number of systems. So it is intrinsically an infinite dimensional problem. And for this reason, at least for who of you that uh, worked a little bit in this problem of controllability of, uh, of the Schrodinger equation as, as a PDE, so know that in this case, we cannot expect to have some exact controllability, but only some, uh, uh, only some approximate controllability. So concerning this uh, uh, problem of uh, ensemble controllability, there are, of course, a lot of, of, uh, of numerical uh, uh, results by many people, for instance, by the group of Glaser. And, uh, but there are just uh, very few uh, theoretical results uh, because the problem is, com is complicated. And I should mention the, uh, the, the famous paper by Kanija and D of 2006, and then this result was refined and generalized in the paper by uh, Karim Bochar, Jean-Michel Coron, uh, and Pierre Rouchon. But this uh, result, uh, that are essentially the only one that I know for, uh, for, uh, uh, for ensemble controllability, so these uh, results are, uh, are restricted to two level systems with two controls, that are, by the way, the most important problem. But uh, we are trying to do uh, more than that. So in this talk, I'm going to present a technique that is actually, uh, so there are some ideas that are inspired by chirped pulses and the syrup process that uh, essentially we, we will try to use some adiabatic theory and some uh, deep understanding of, of what is happening close to a conical intersection of the eigenvalue. And so this is a technique that we have developed by in our group in Paris uh, with Mario Sigalotti and uh, three of our of our students. So Rikang Liang is actually our PhD student, and the other two finish and now has some uh, a permanent position. Okay, so to start, uh, let's consider a, a case in which we have uh, two controls. So this is our our system, and we have. Uh, um, uh, it, uh, our Hamiltonian, so the matrices that you see appearing here, are real, uh, symmetric. So uh, we make this hypothesis uh, to, to simplify a, a bit, but actually the hypothesis that uh, these are, are real, it is not uh, very important. If they are complex, uh, we can do the same, but we need uh, uh, at least three controls. So we will uh, discuss this maybe, uh, uh, maybe later. But the hypothesis is that we have uh, at least uh, two controls, it is uh, crucial. So, and this is also the case of the result of, uh, of Kanija and Lee and uh, Coron, Bouchard, and, and Rouchon. Uh, in the second part of the talk, I will try to explain what can be done if you try to control this, this system with uh, only one control. And actually, I will discuss the problem of compatibility of the rotating wave approximation and of uh, the adiabatic uh, uh, approximation. Okay, so uh, let's start. I will do something uh, very simple. So in principle, what I'm explaining in the first part of the talk is something that uh, you, are, you probably know, uh, but you will see how these things that are, come from the, from the physical community 
actually uh, permits to make some, uh, some interesting result. So why I'm considering a, a system with a real Hamiltonian and two controls? So for a, for a simple reason that in this case, for this class of system, if you have an Aguevelian intersection, so here I'm uh, uh, plotting the, the spectrum of the system as function of the two controls seen as parameters. So here they are not function of time, they're just parameters. So I, if you fix uh, this value of the control, you have your spectrum, and if I move this control, I get some surfaces. And what will happen, it is that generically, if you have an eigenvalue intersection, and this uh, you, you know very well, so the eigenvalue intersections are not transversal like this, but they are conical in, in, uh, in this way. And so this happens uh, generically. So generically means that uh, uh, for most of the system, uh, so from mathematical point of view, in, in an open and dense, subset of the set of all of all systems uh, you have a situation like this and moreover means that uh, these intersections are structurally stable in the sense that if you have a system with uh, one of these intersections and you modify a little bit your Hamiltonian then this uh, singularity will not disappear that it is stable will uh, will uh, will stay there so why we have this result? So this is known from the beginning of, of quantum mechanics. It's just the fact that if you have a symmetric matrix like this, and you compute uh, the eigenvalue of this matrix, then uh, this is the formula, one half a plus c plus uh, the square root of this. So if you want that the two eigenvalue coincide, you need uh, that this square root uh, is equal to zero. And so you need that both b is equal to zero and a it is equal to c. So for symmetric matrices uh, requiring that you have uh, an eigenvalue intersection means not one condition, but two conditions. And so this is the reason why a singularity are like this, because we are in a space of two dimension, two conditions. So generically, this will appear, will, will occur in an in isolated point. Okay, so this is known from a long time, and actually it is true in much more generality, even in, uh, in the case of a system evolving uh, on a, an infinite dimensional uh, in that space. And uh, uh, so the, in, the, in this paper that we wrote uh, 10 years ago, it is formalized, but there is nothing special there. OK, so how to now try to make some uh, uh, ensemble control by using uh, um, a diabatic theory? So the idea is the following. So you draw the spectrum of your, of your system. Here, for instance, this is a, a, a three-level system. Then uh, assume that we have a conical intersection, because even if they are generic, this does not mean that you have always. And then uh, uh, if you have a situation like this, so levels that are connected by this conical intersection, you have to draw a path that pass inside this conical intersection like this. And then uh, if you start with uh, your wave function that is uh, all, uh, uh, all probability is on this state, and then uh, you, uh, you use adiabatic theory. So when you are far from the eigenvalue intersection, you, uh, adiabatic theory tell you that you are instantaneously following your eigenvector at the order epsilon. That means that if you want to arrive with a precision of epsilon, you need a time that is of the order one over, over epsilon. And then you have to care what happened uh, close to uh, conical intersection. So here, there is no anymore the adiabatic theory that is, uh, that is uh, really working. So you use another uh, uh, other decoupling that is actually the conic, what we call conical decoupling. But uh, I think most of you know how to do this. And uh, here, you can actually, the population actually will follow your path, but close to conical intersection, the order, it is square root of epsilon, not epsilon, is a little bit uh, worse, the situation. And then uh, this means that to, to, to have an, uh, an error of order epsilon at the end, you need a time that is one over epsilon square. But this is not so important at this, uh, at this level. So you draw something like this. So this will, uh, will produce a population transfer between level one and level three. So this is was for one fixed system. Now let's try to, let's see what happens if you have an ensemble of, of system. So in this picture I showed, uh, so this is a four level system from zero to three. 
the conical uh, eigenvalue intersection. So I assume that I have one here from zero to one. So this is my space of control, see the uh, parameter. Seeing that you have your eigenvalue surfaces uh, here, one over the other. So this is the intersection between zero, one, one, two, two, three. So to induce a transition from zero to three with only one system, you would draw a path like this that go inside the conical intersection. And then this, as we said, the biadiabatic theory permits to have this, uh, uh, this uh, trans. Now, if you have not only one system, but a family of system, so as soon as you move the parameter that make you changing from one system to the other one, so the eigenvalue intersection will move on a curve hmm? because you change, you modify a little bit the system. So eigenvalue intersection do not disappear, but they move. So they move along a curve. They move here along a curve and along a curve. And now what uh, we do, is that we make a path that is entering inside this curve like this, uh, then it's going out, uh, it's entering again, going out, entering, and going out. So now you see this path will make the transition not only for the, the, the original system with these three intersections, but also for all systems that are close to this, uh, because, he, because I will pass. Uh, so another system will have a conical intersection that is a little bit deplaced on this curve, also here and also here. So a, a trajectory of this type will permit a transition between level zero to level three for all this system, at least for small value of, uh, of, of the parameter. So this is the idea uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, the base of all of the story. And uh, uh, let's see uh, the weak point of this, uh, uh, of this technique. And then let's apply to the two-level system to see how it's working. All this is known, as I said, and then we will go on with, uh, with all them. So the first weak point of this technique, of course, is the presence of eigenvalue intersect. So not all system has them. For instance, a two-level system with, uh, of this form, so W here is the control, has no eigenvalue intersection, the eigenvalue are this, but you know that we can create artificially, but going in a, in a rotating frame, so if I call my control in this form and I go in the rotating frame, actually I can write my, my matrix in this way. So now I have eigenvalue uh, intersection. We'll do this more in detail uh, later. And uh, uh, actually one can, one can see that uh, if you have a controllable system, there is always a, a, a set of coordinates that are, that are time varying in which you can see that the possibility of going from one level to another one is given by a presence of a conical intersection. So this fact uh, is, uh, is interesting in the sense that um, even this Lie algebraic condition that we use always for controllability can be seen as generated by this uh, eigenvalue intersection in suitable, in suitable coordinates. So you, 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 in this paper, you can see a little bit of, uh, uh, of this idea. So the other weak point of, of this technique, it is that when you have, a, you make a big perturbation, that means that you are using a lot of system with different parameters, a lot in the sense that parameters become big. So this eigenvalue intersection could become non-conical because now this is conical, it is generic for one system, not a family of system, but this case can be treated uh, as well. So this is not a big problem. So now let's, uh, do in details uh, the two-level system and see how uh, th this idea actually provide the famous uh, chirped pulses. So consider this system here, so a two-level system uh, driven by, by, by my control that is complex, so these are actually two controls. And alpha is uh, the parameter that is unknown that uh, uh, belongs to a certain interval. So the energy of my system, so if here is the zero, so E is the reference energy, and actually the system has an energy that is between this point and between this point, so the different system that, that I have. And I want to induce a transition from one eigenstate to, uh, to the other one. So how to do? Uh, so eigenvalues has no, as I already said, uh, are this one, so there are no intersections. And so you have to create uh, artificially. So you write the controls in this form with an amplitude and a, and a phase. Then you make a, a unitary change of coordinates time varying. And then you 
come out with a system in this, uh, in this form, with uh, now the E is disappear because I'm in the rotating frame. And so here I have my U that it is, uh, uh, it is on the anti-diagonal here. And now uh, I have a new control V that is the derivative of uh, the phase that I have here. So actually is the difference of the frequency of the reference frequency of the system. So now it is uh, my new system in this, uh, in this coordinates. And now let's see if this system has eigenvalue intersection. So if alpha is equal to zero, there is an eigenvalue intersection in the, in the, in the origin, in the space U, V, uh, because uh, uh, the, the, the eigenvalues are this one. And for an, another value of alpha, they are in the point uh, U equal to zero and V equal to alpha. So in this uh, uh, picture, so this is, uh, um, this is V, this axis, this is U, this is my eigenvalue intersection that is on this axis. So for alpha equal to zero is here, and then it is, it is moving if, if I have another, another system. And so now what we could do, uh, this is my U, this is my V. So U is the amplitude of my control and V, it is uh, the difference of frequency. Uh, I can draw a path that is, has this form. So this uh, first, part here and then a half circle like this. And, th and then you see this path will cross all eigenvalue intersection for all system that they are on this uh, uh, red line. And then you come back uh, adiabatically. And then you will have that uh, along this part, you will change, uh, you see here u is equal to zero. No? So this is completely, uh, the two components of psi are completely decoupled. So Nothing is happening here, besides the fact that they are changing the eigenvalue, but not the psi. And in this part here, you are adiabatic, then you are not changing the eigenvalue, but you are changing the eigenvector. And this one provides a, a transition between level from one level to, uh, to the other one. So if you come back to your original system, so this is the, the path of U and V, Actually, the par uh, this part is useless because when u is equal to zero, you are doing nothing, so you could uh, avoid. This is why uh, people doing these things just use half, uh, half circle. And uh, for the second part, uh, 2e plus the derivative of delta is uh, the frequency of the pulse. So what we are doing, it is that we are starting a pulse with a frequency that is, uh, in this picture, it is higher than the, the, the possible frequency of the system, up to frequency that is smaller of all possible frequency of the system, and this will make a transition for all, uh, for all those systems, and you can do in the opposite order. And these are the famous chirped pulses that uh, then you can uh, explicit uh, uh, this as, a, as, as an arc circle, and this is the final uh, uh, expression of your control with the parameter epsilon of the adiabatic approximation. And notice that this epsilon you see appearing in the denominator here. And this is very important it's due to the fact that v, it is the derivative of, of, of delta, of the phase. And so when you compute, you, you have, to, uh, have to care about it. We put instead of t, epsilon t. So there is some epsilon that is going, uh, is going up. Okay, and so these are the type of, uh, of control that you are using. So this is the time. So these are the imaginary part and the real part of the control. So you are starting with a frequency that is higher than, uh, uh, than uh, the, 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 the true frequency of your system, and you're finished with a frequency that is, that is, uh, uh, that is small. So, and uh, this is the theorem which you, you, you write. But all this, of course, is, is known. It is, it is, used a lot. And uh, um, this technique that uh, I explained that uh, provide in this simple case, the chirped pulses actually can be generalized to a system of uh, uh, any number of level and even in infinite dimension. So when you have a true, uh, a true PD, uh, because there is no, the, the, the technique uh, does not really use the infinite dimensional uh, the, uh, the, the finite dimensionality of, uh, of, of the system itself. So, and, um, and the same technique uh, explain why 
for uh, uh, the stir up process, uh, the famous counterintuitive solution, actually it is so robust because the eigenvalue intersection. When uh, you, uh, you have some parameters in the system, they move on the two axes and then the same set of controls that uh, uh, people use from, uh, from many years uh, uh, actually work well for all system because eigenvalue intersection move only on the axis. So this is why this uh, strategy, it is uh, very, uh, very robust. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, what you can do with uh, uh, a system with uh, a real Hamiltonian and, uh, and two controls. So this technique permits you to make this uh, uh, ensemble uh, uh, controllability uh, result. But uh, in, in practice, in most cases, uh, in, in experiment, from what uh, I, uh, I understand, we don't have two controls, but you have uh, only one. And then uh, you have uh, what we find in most of papers in, uh, in, in physics. So people say, OK, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, not two, two controls. We have only one. But we go in the rotating wave approximation. So that means that instead of using uh, this, that true control, that is uh, are two controls, because the, uh, uh, this is a complex function. So I'm controlling here u and the delta. Instead of using this control, I put, uh, instead of the exponential, uh, I put the cosinus. So, so actually two cosinus, because I use this formula and I forget the control rotating terms. And then uh, uh, once that you do this, so the, control, the u and the delta that you have here work as if they were two different controls. Uh, but this is only one function. So these are not truly two different controls. It is only one control. And you're using the fact that they, they, they work at a different time scale. And so in a sense, they are independent. But uh, um, it is uh, the justification of, uh, of uh, this uh, approximation in this context. Actually, it is very uh, de delicate. And this is what I'm going to discuss. OK. Uh, so let's uh, uh, see uh, one second what is really this uh, rotating wave approximation for this uh, simple two-level system. So we have this two-level system. So the rotating wave approximation consists in putting, uh, uh, in saying that uh, the, the final point where you arrive is the same if you use a, a complex control on the, or a real control with in, in place of the exponential 2 cosinus, uh, when you go slow enough, so you have, you have to put an epsilon in front of the time, but also you have to put an epsilon in front of the control. So the rotating wave approximation needs to go slow and to have a small control. This is different from diabatic theory. A diabatic theory needs a, a slow control, but not necessarily uh, small controls. Controls can be big. And uh, in the rotating of approximation, they need to be small. So if you have these small controls, then you can prove actually that uh, the, the, where your system go with, with this uh, control or with this control is essentially the same at the order, at the order epsilon. Uh, so and this is a simple consequence of a, of a, of, of a, of a theorem that uh, people in dynamical system use very, very often on the fact that if you have some sequence of vector field that is converging in measure, then the solution will, uh, will converge. So this is uh, uh, actually the rotating wave approximation. It is uh, uh, something that is used in other contexts um, many, many times. So now the problem it is that we have to, uh, so I want to make some uh, Ensemble controllability. I know how to do with two controls with adiabatic uh, theory. But if you have only one control, I would like to use uh, the rotating wave to split the, the only control that I have in two controls. And then I would like to use the adiabatic approach. So this is what you see very often in paper. So you do, people do often in, in, uh, in cascade the rotating wave approximation and then the, uh, the adiabatic theory. But as uh, um, we are going to, to see, this is uh, uh, not justified, and it's possible only in, uh, in uh, it's possible in many cases, but not in all cases. Uh, and let's do, uh, let's try to see this. So 
uh, for the rotating wave approximation, I would have to use uh, this control, a control of this, uh, of this type, so that is uh, slow and uh, also small. And for the diabatic approximation, I have to use a control of this type, uh, that is complex, uh, that is uh, slow, is epsilon 2, but is not uh, small in principle. There is no reason. So now what we could do, we could combine uh, the two approximation and get a control that is uh, this one, but also with this one inside. So we divide by epsilon 2, and then in place of, uh, of t, we have epsilon 1, epsilon 2 t. So, and we hope that uh, this will induce a transition in a time t divided by epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. So this is uh, the formal combination of the two approximations at, 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 at the same time. And let's see what happens. So this is actually not good. If you do this, it doesn't work. And the reason it is the following. Uh, if you decrease epsilon 2, so epsilon 2 is for the adiabatic approximation, then you need that the rotating wave approximation it uh, holds for a long time, not only for um, time 1 over epsilon 1, his, yeah. his time, but for the time that comes from the 2 approximation. And so this degradates the, uh, the, the, the the rotating wave approximation. On the other side, if you decrease uh, uh, epsilon 1, the one of the rotating wave, so this degradates uh, the adiabatic approximation. So, because adiabatic approximation fills the gap between the eigenvalues. Um, and if you decrease epsilon 1, this, you are making the gap becoming more smaller. And so the constant you have in the, in the adiabatic approximation uh, become big, and then you lose this. And also, if you put this uh, uh, epsilon 1 here, it, it, you remember that uh, in the diabetic approximation, I needed to make this circle uh, to enclose all frequency of all my system. And uh, if I put this epsilon 1 here, then uh, uh, the, this circle will shrink. And actually, the, the number of systems that I take in my in my frequency that I'm sweeping to, to make the transition becomes smaller and smaller, and so th th this doesn't. So in physics literature, because people, as most of you, do this often, so they do this one, but uh, with epsilon 1 equal to 1, and it is somehow assumed that for epsilon 2 going to 0, the, the adiabatic approximation, because this epsilon 2 is the one for the Diabatic approximation make things working also for the rotating wave. So this is what uh, people see usually, and uh, it, it seems to be true, but that's not justified, and it's a little bit uh, uh, delicate, uh, uh, complicated. So let's now look to some numerical simulation to understand uh, to understand uh, the problem. So for exactly for what is used usually uh, with this uh, uh, epsilon one equal to one, epsilon two equal to epsilon. So what people do in uh, uh, usually in, in, in the paper. So now, uh, so I took E equal to 1, so this is my epsilon, and V0 is uh, the, you remember, this is E, so uh, this is the, the different system that I have, and uh, I'm using a control that uh, has a frequency that going from here to here. So this is the, the, the complex control, and then if you do this, it's working very well. So the state one go to from zero to one, and the other go from uh, on the go to zero. So this is for the complex system. This is what happens for the real system with uh, real controls. And you see that it's working very well. So at the end of the transition, you are uh, exactly where you want to, to, to be. And so this is the rotating wave approximation that is working. So notice this interesting point that the convergence of the trajectory is only at the end uh, and not uh, along the transition. So this trajectory actually is not, is not converging uh, because this has become kind of a measure. So, but at the end, uh, it, is, it is working. So this is what is done, uh, is done usually. So he, uh, here there was no, uh, I was in this point with, with, so with no dispersion of the parameter. Now let's take a parameter that is a little bit uh, there. And so the picture, it's like this, so it is still, uh, it is still uh, working, 
and uh, the, the picture become a little bit less good, but still at the end I am where I would like to be for the for the system with the real controls and for the system with complex controls. So things things looks to work. And now let's look for this system to the to the fidelity. So uh, how much is C two at the end of the transition? So here we have a uh, two picture. In the first one, I have a e. So e is always equal to one, and I take v zero equal to zero point four. So this is equal to one, and this is zero point four. So I'm going from something here to something here, and so you see that for all system, so this is alpha that are between this line and this line, essentially, at the end, you have the good transition. So it is very good here. Uh, for a system which you has a frequency that is less than the frequency that you are using, it, that doesn't work at all. So that's, uh, that's good, because you are not passing through the conic. But now, if I take this V0 bigger, 0 0.7, so I'm going a, a little bit more on the two sides, you see that something happening. So the, the simulation uh, says that there is some mistake somewhere, and that this uh, transition it is not it's not working anymore. This is a, a, a strange phenomenon that uh, uh, from zero four compared with one and zero seven to compare with with one. So there is something to be uh, to to understand. Understand. Okay. So let's go on. So the idea that uh, uh, was used here, it was to combine uh, the two, so the adiabatic theory and uh, the rotating wave approximation by putting another epsilon at the, nomina at the denominator here. Uh, so this was an idea that had uh, uh, our student, uh, uh, Remy Roban, that uh, it was a, a great idea because permitted to, to, to to go, to go on. So we put another epsilon here, and uh, we try to see what uh, uh, is possible to prove uh, for the system with a control of, uh, of this type. So you see, this control is slow by the two epsilon. It is uh, small. But this delta has another epsilon here. And this is to avoid that when uh, epsilon 1 go to 0, so the frequency is swept by, by the control shrink and so this keep uh, the keep large keep large and then uh, the uh, uh, the the result that uh, was obtained it is the following with this with this uh, uh, with this control so uh, the, we could prove that uh, the transition it is possible but it is complicated so look we have a new condition so this is the true result that is uh, uh, that we found that actually this combination of rotating wave and adiabatic theory is possible, but you need that the energy of your system, it is at least twice the, so you have zero, you have a, a no. uh, oh, okay. So we have this uh, uh, zero here. So this is the reference uh, energy of the system. And so I need that uh, here, this, here's the half. So if I have a, 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 a dispersion of frequency that is here, then I can do, if it is more than half, uh, something like this, then it will not work anymore. So this is no, this does not work. And, the, and the, the one that is a little bit smaller, it is, uh, it is work. So in this case, we can induce the transition. And here you see uh, the, uh, the error that is a, a little bit uh, complicated that now I'm going to discuss uh, what, what you get as, uh, as error in this, uh, this transition. OK, so it is written here. So you see, you, you have epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 1, so the maximum, and the epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 2, but this to the power n0. So see, this can be done for every power n0. I'm going to explain what. So first question, it is that, uh, uh, is this a small or not? Uh, so uh, yes, could be small. If you take uh, epsilon 2 equal to epsilon 1 square, then you get the ma maximum between so epsilon 
one squared but divided by epsilon one, which is epsilon one, and the other one, it is n zero minus two. So for instance, uh, if you take uh, n zero equal to three, this is epsilon one. Recall, however, that the time in which I arrive at the end is one over epsilon one, epsilon two. So this is not, it's not of order epsilon. It is, it is not, not so good. We're going to optimize this, uh, uh, this later. So let's uh, look what are uh, these two terms. So the epsilon two divided by epsilon one, this is uh, the adiabatic uh, error. And the other term here, it is the rotating wave approximation error, but this is an approximation at order n. So this, we had to make computation up to the order n to have this n here. So as I said, this is a true, uh, the, the true uh, new condition. And uh, uh, actually, if you take uh, epsilon one given by this value here, and then you can prove, uh, so this just come from, uh, from, this, uh, from this formula, that we can uh, obtain at the end an error that is of the order one over t plus eta for every eta. So we are not able to do as an error one over epsilon, but just a little bit, a little bit worse than that. So this is what we are uh, we are able to do. And the 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 either result would be to have that this is working for uh, every epsilon sufficiently small without going to zero to both, but actually this would be a little bit better. This is what is done in, uh, in, in practice usually, but uh, it does not come uh, from, from our result, but it is, very, it is very close. Okay, so let's uh, look uh, one second to see if this condition uh, is verified in our, uh, in our simulation. So as I said, this is uh, the fidelity. So I, I, the transition is when, uh, C2 modulo square is equal to one. So when I'm here, here. And so here, E is equal to one, V0 is equal to 0 0.4. So this condition is satisfied. And this is the good picture. So if you are sweeping, if you have a system between this point and this point, you actually make the transition. And in this other picture that I showed before, V0 is 0 0.7. And so actually this condition here, it is not verified. And then if you are out, uh, in this case, uh, the, 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 the transition, and it works on one side, but it's not uh, work on, on the other side. So the condition, this condition that we found here, it is, uh, mm, we believe that is a sharp condition. We have not proved, but uh, uh, should, be, uh, should, be, should be sharp. Okay, so just, uh, um, Few, few, few remarks. So uh, this was for a transition from one level to another one. If you want to move in the full Hilbert space, uh, this requires additional work, as uh, the work that was done by um, by, uh, by, uh, by Pierre Rouchon, uh, collaborators, and also by Kaneja and Lee. Uh, actually, this can be done for the, for the two-level system, and all uh, results can be found in this paper. And now, uh, the last uh, the few things I would like to say is how to generalize uh, uh, this result to more complicated systems, so it means uh, N-level system. So here I have a, uh, an Hamiltonian uh, H that has some uh, eigenvalues that depend on an unknown parameter. I have some uh, coupling Hamiltonian that depends on, uh, on some other unknown uh, parameter. And uh, the technique uh, can be generalized, this, uh, generalized to this n-level system. But uh, here we have uh, to be very careful because we can have a lot of resonances because we have many systems. We have always to, for this controllability issue, to be sure that uh, if you want to go from a level to another one, there is no another gap that is equal. Otherwise, uh, uh, when you put this frequency, this will make also uh, working the other frequency there, and so it become uh, more complicated. And so if you want to induce a transition from a level P to a level Q, uh, so if this is uh, the difference of energy it is in some interval V0, V1, so you need that all other uh, difference of eigenvalues uh, are not in this interval. And also there is another condition that is much more complicated 
that uh, uh, they should also do not belong to twice uh, this uh, difference of uh, of uh, of uh, energy. And um, in this case, uh, this can uh, anyway. This uh, 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 is a good result of controllability. Actually, this condition could be eliminated if one accept to have a, a, a less good convergence of the result. So this is necessary to have a, a conversion of the same order of the previous result that here is done uh, up to second order of, uh, of the rotating wave uh, uh, approximately. And um, for the moment, um, there, is, there are no ensemble controllability on the Hilbert space for more than two level system. I'm not sure that we will never be able to do this. So going from one, one eigenstate to the other one, yes, but uh, the full controllability in the Hilbert space, uh, it is not uh, clear. And I, I thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. I have a very basic question on the notation of ensemble controllability. So that means that you are steering all members of your ensemble from the same initial to the same final yes. state? Yeah, this is, a, I mean, the part that I have explained is, is, is like this. So mm -hmm. this, the, the, all systems are in the same state and they will go to the same, to the same state. The notion of controllability was used by, by, by Pierre Schoner and the collaborators was more general. So they could also have a, um, a system that were belonging to different uh, initial states. And those uh, initial and final states, they have to be eigenstates of the system, or can that also be superpositions of, of eigenstates? So for the two-level system, can be any state, any initial and any final state. So for this n-level system, we are not able to, to generalize to any point, from any point to any point of the Hilbert space, even if they are the same for every pair of, pair of system. But I don't, I'm probably even not, not, not true. I'm, I, I don't know uh, exactly, but it looks very, uh, very difficult to, to generalize. The Hilbert space is big, and uh, at least the technique is not provided. Mm. OK, are there any other questions? Seems not the case. And I would say, oh, 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 sorry. I didn't. Uh, Hugo, on a, a general level, uh, do you have any tools that guarantee that your intersections are always conical? So, so in intersections are, uh, of course, they are not always conical. Mm -hmm. but and how, how how far may you deviate from the conical situ from the ideal conical uh, uh, situation? So that is there some kind of a parameter how one can uh, uh, parameterize this well behavedness with respect to conicity? Uh, uh, so um, genetically they are conical. So e e e if they are not conical, the first situation that you can meet is that they are semi-conical. That means that they are conical in one direction, they are typically like uh, uh, something like this. Huh? But on this, uh, on the, the direction out of the blackboard, uh, they, are, they are conical. So they are like this in one direction, and then on the other direction, they are parabolic. So this case can be treated as well. But you should be careful that in this case, you don't have to go on, uh, on this side, because if you go on this side, you, come, you remain down in the transition, so you should go on the good conical direction to, to do this. Otherwise, uh, because the, the, um, the adiabatic theorem follow the analyticity of, uh, of the eigenvalues. So uh, if you go on the side, the analytic part is, is down. If you go on, on the side where they are like this, the analytic part go up. So uh, we can treat the case, uh, th this case, the, se the semi-conical one. Of course, you can have a many degeneration at any order and many, many, many situations that are much more complicated, but they become more and more rare, of, of, of course. But of course, in practical situation, you can have symmetries that is a special, special. 